Hello, scholars. Welcome again to another episode of History. Uh, hope you're doing okay. Hope, uh, I don't know, maybe you're enjoying this somewhat cold weather. Who enjoys that? I don't know. Uh, maybe you got your lecture notes out. I hope you do. I've got them right here. Maybe you've printed them. Remember, with Google Docs, you don't have to uh, request access. You just make a copy. Uh, today, we are talking about the 1992... L.A. riots. Um, we are continuing to talk forward, kind of moving forward in history. Last time we talked about the rise of conservatism, uh, and we're going to kind of see, like, I guess kind of where those efforts led off. Um, so our objective is that by the end of this lecture, we'll be able to explain the effect of the 1992 L.A. riots on the modern justice system. Uh, so let's begin. Um, so to understand the, the effect of the L.A. riots, where do I move my guy? There we go. Uh, we, we have to go back to Los Angeles in the early 90s. So what's it like? Uh, so in this specific neighborhood, um, more than half of the population in this neighborhood is black. Uh, however, if we look at the, uh, the majority of the owners of grocery stores, of liquor stores in this neighborhood, we can see that the majority is definitely less than black. Uh, half of the stores here are owned uh, by Korean immigrants. About a third of them are owned by Hispanic immigrants, um, Latino immigrants. Uh, and so, you know, one reason there that, that people theorized is that uh, Koreans or non-African Americans, uh, Latino Americans, that, that Koreans and Latinos were able to get loans easier and that's how they were able to open up these businesses. Either way, uh, the, the stats of the neighborhood also weren't great. Uh, unemployment was around 50%. There was a crack cocaine, cocaine epidemic beginning around this time. Um, gang activity and violent crime were high, and as were, was uh, police presence. Uh, you'll remember, if we think back to last week's lecture, that with the rise of conservatism comes more funding for police, comes more funding specifically uh, to fight the war on drugs. Uh, and so police presence is high, specifically here in South Los Angeles. Um, so that takes us to one of two major factors uh, for the LA riots, for these riots in, in Los Angeles in the early 90s. Uh, the first factor here is the death of Latasha Harlan. So let's talk about this event. Uh, this is March 1991. The main event we're going to be talking about is 1992. Um, so here, the, this first event, uh, we have a Korean grocery store owner. Tensions are already pretty high between Korean immigrants and African Americans. Um, as we saw on the slide before, Korean immigrants tended to own more of the businesses. Um, they tended to be like a real culture clash between these Korean immigrants and African Americans. Um, and so... There's already this kind of uh, kind of like feud almost between these two groups of people, um, but here in March 1991 in South Los Angeles, uh, you have uh, Latasha Harlins. She went into this grocery store, this liquor store, um, to buy an orange juice. Uh, it was a dollar seventy nine. She went up to the front counter. Um, she had the orange juice in her backpack already, uh, but the store owner. Uh, fought with her, thought she was trying to steal it. Uh, police learned later that Latasha Harlan's, like, she had the money in hand, and according to cameras, like, there was no sign she was going to steal it. Uh, but regardless, uh, Soon Ja Du, the, the owner of this liquor store, uh, ends up pulling out a revolver during this, this fight uh, and shoots Latasha from behind, from a distance of three feet. Uh, so she tried to claim self-defense. That's kind of hard, though. Uh, if, if the person you shoot, you shoot them in the back, specifically the back of the head. Um, so Latasha Harlins dies as a result. Uh, Soon Ja Du, she claimed self-defense uh, and is ultimately actually convicted of manslaughter. Now, the thing that upset uh, South Los Angeles was that she, she didn't do any jail time. Uh, she was sentenced to probation. She, she had to do some community service. She had to pay some fines, uh, but she did not face jail time. And so let me move my little guy here. And so as a result, uh, you know, the African-American community clearly sees that there's one justice system for African-Americans and then another justice system 
maybe for everyone else, right? Uh, and so we have this quote here from the judge who said, did Mrs. Du act, react inappropriately? Absolutely. But was that reaction understandable? I think that it was. This is not a time for revenge. And no matter what sentence this court imposes, Mrs. Du will be punished every day for the rest of her life. So there, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing kind of one really significant event where African Americans are not being uh, heard or, or not being given justice appropriately, right? So that's that's event one. Let's go to event two. And this is one maybe that you've heard of before. Um, this would be the Rodney King chase and uh, the, the video of, of the results of that chase. Now, uh, we're not going to be watching the videos as a part of this lecture. Um, you know, we kind of get enough of that in the media now. If you want to go find these videos, super easy to find on YouTube, on Google. Um, but we're going to kind of focus on the content to get to our objective for today. Uh, so here with event number two, this is also 1991. Uh, we had 25 year old Rodney King. He's an African American man. Uh, he was out on parole for robbery, uh, and he was driving, uh, and was intoxicated. Uh, and he knew uh, that if he was pulled over, if he was arrested for, for driving under the influence, that he was going to go back to jail, that his parole was going to be revoked. Uh, so Rodney King, he led police on an eight-mile chase. Uh, he eventually leads them through Los Angeles. He's eventually pulled over in front of an apartment complex. Um, he, he pulls over eventually on his own. Um, and he's ordered out of the vehicle, but he, he stayed in the vehicle. At this point, uh, one of the citizens nearby, George Holiday, gets out his video camera and he starts filming what happens. Well, what happens? It's what you see in this little clip, this little uh, this snapshot here. Four police officers arrive. They pull Rodney King out of the vehicle. Uh, they beat him with batons for, for about 15 minutes. They tasered him twice. They thought he was on drugs. They thought he was on PCP, which, which he wasn't. Um, and, and all of this is captured by a citizen and that news footage or that footage gets turned over to the news. Uh, so what happens? Well, it gains a lot of publicity once people see here. Uh, and in the actual aftermath for Rodney King is that he, uh, he suffered skull fractures, broken bones, teeth, permanent brain damage, and he wasn't even uh, actually charged in the end. The, the police decided that too much time had gone by, that they wouldn't have enough evidence, and so he was actually released. Uh, so once this video is shown, uh, the, the general reaction here is uh, if, if you are not African American, you're, you're shocked at the behavior of these police officers. If you are African American, uh, you, you've been experiencing this in South Los Angeles the whole time, and it's only the first time now that it's getting brought out in public. Well, the four police officers, uh, they're prosecuted, uh, they're charged with excessive use of force, and the jury, uh, not one being African American, by the way, uh, finds all four officers not guilty, right? So the four police officers involved in that don't face any charges. And the jury said that they felt like the videotape may have been edited, that the first three seconds weren't shown, and therefore they couldn't really trust that video evidence. Well, almost immediately after they, they deliver that not guilty verdict, and also keeping in mind the death of Latasha Harlins, these two events kind of culminate into, uh, you can see here in this, this newspaper from shortly after, rioters setting fire, fires, looting stores, right? So less than three hours after that uh, Rodney King verdict is delivered, we see fires, looting, vandalism, resulting in six-day riots throughout Los Angeles. Uh, these riots were broadcast live on TV. Um, there, there wasn't great communication between the local and state and federal uh, military and police. Um, they also had failed to secure gun stores, so we saw kind of widespread use of, of firearms during this time. Um, ultimately, we, we see here, you can see 63 people killed, 2,300 people being injured, something like 12,000 people arrested, a billion dollars in damage, and most of that violence in these riots were, was focused on Korean-owned businesses, Latino-owned businesses, kind of going back to those original causes with, with Latasha Harlins and the, the circumstances that kind of really aggravated that. Um, so I've, I've got some pictures here uh, that'll just kind of illustrate what the, the mood was around this time. So I just, we see this one just a little bit bigger. Let me move my icon out of the way. So we see here just kind of like the reckless, I don't know, I don't know, how do we describe it? You know, the 
the outpouring of of anger of of of, of being upset about about these conditions uh, here we see a picture of uh korean grocery store owners or, or store owners they actually needed to band together to try and look out for one another uh here we see kind of the result of some of this rioting this looting the thing to keep in mind here is that like you know it seems unreasonable and yet you know this was a community that had been facing injustices and this is kind of what happens when you you know when you you aren't heard when your voice isn't heard um so we see here the the federal government ended up sending the military out to to address these um and speaking of the federal government well th there's actually you know something else going on during 1992 when this goes down uh which is a presidential election uh, one of the candidates here uh, is Bill Clinton, and Bill Clinton felt like uh, his comments on the situation is that it, the violence was a result of a, a lack of economic opportunities and, and social opportunities within South Los Angeles. Um, he blamed the previous Republican administrations uh, for kind of the, the spending cuts that had been happening to the government, the lack of social programs, uh, the increase in funding for for police without any strings attached to it. Um, here we have a direct quote. Uh, he said that people were looting during the, the LA riots because they don't share our values. Their children are growing up in a culture alien from ours, without family, without neighborhood, without church, without support. So there's there's a little bit in that in that quote, there's a little bit of a, you know, they don't know better, but there's also an element there of they don't have the support there, they don't have the education, the government, you know, funding, the programs, uh, you know, economic opportunities, like he said. Uh, so Bill Clinton, as you can see here in the map, would eventually go on to be the president here and, and win in 1992. Um, and, and that would result, oh, this is a great... Uh, pause this video, by the way, if you'd like to. This is a little bonus material, but uh, this is a, a clipping from an article the day after the L.A. riots began, uh, so, so check that out. Um, so this ultimately results in the 1994 crime bill. So shortly after the L.A. riots, remember it was a six-day riot, um, shortly after those end, Congress begins to try and work on how can we fix that, how can we address these problems. Uh, so in 1991, it starts off as this police accountability bill. Uh, give it three years, Bill Clinton is in office and it goes through Congress and it's talked about that there's there's more issues than that. Uh, it becomes the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1994. Uh, it, it was, by the way, written by Senator Joe Biden. Uh, he's currently a candidate for president. Uh, so familiar name there. Uh, but what the bill did is uh, it provided funding for additional police officers, uh, specifically uh, $14 billion in police training grants. So one of the problems they identified that made the LA riots worse was the police really weren't trained on how to de-escalate or kind of peacefully resolve uh, crimes or, or, or violence. Um, and so that money here as part of this bill went towards helping that. Well, it did some other things as well. It also uh, funded prisons. Uh, it it gave more funding to them. Uh, it banned uh, something like 27 different kinds of semi-automatic rifles, trying to get those off the streets. Uh, it expanded the death penalty, and it also instituted a three-strikes law for repeat offenders. So those committing federal offenses, uh, if, if you are convicted three times, that's it. That's going to result in life imprisonment right so uh that nine billion dollars for prisons by the way came from what's called truth in sentencing laws and essentially that means inmates have to serve most of their prison sentence something like 85 percent right so there's no like half time for good behavior no the federal government in 1994 was like we will give you additional money but you have to enforce these prison sentences. Well, what are the results there? Uh, we see mass incarceration and prison overcrowding as a result of this bill. Like, yes, crime eventually does go down. Uh, police forces expand. However, one of the, the major effects here, if we make this graph a little bigger, is that there, there are way more incarcerated Americans 
right around the time that this bill is enacted, right? We see it right there, 1994. Another kind of side effect here uh, is in the very famous O.J. Simpson trial, the, the O.J. Simpson verdict. Uh, if, you're, if you're not familiar, O.J. Simpson, very famous football player, actor, well-loved. He was charged with murdering his wife and a family friend. He was ultimately found not guilty. Uh, it's a highly publicized trial. It's on TV almost 24-7. Uh, and the jury found him not guilty despite overwhelming evidence. They said... Uh, partly in due to that injustice of the Rodney King verdict, right? Uh, partly due to Rodney King kind of not getting his day in court, to not getting justice. Uh, the jurors here th considered that. They considered the L.A. riots, and they thought something needs to, some kind of justice needed to be filled in, right? So uh, this one event kind of had a huge ripple effect in terms of what happened today, and it also forces us to ask some some really important questions. Um, I'll, before we go on to the next thing, we, we see this image of, uh, of the carnage of the LA riots. Uh, I've got a, a quote from a friend that I want to read to you that I think sums up and kind of provokes a good question on the meaning and significance of the LA riots. Uh, and, that, and that quote is here. Uh, How do we make actual change? Riots work... Right? I mean, they got the change, ultimately, that they wanted, better policing. Riots work, but what is the real answer? Right? Uh, perhaps it is to see your common man and break down stereotypes, cultural differences, social inequalities, and realize uh, that we are all just humans, that uh, we are not making it off this planet alive, so we should probably find a better way than riots to try and prevent uh, these sorts of things, but creating the change uh, that we need. All right. Nice work. We're on to the next thing. See ya.